Hi guys, welcome back to the ZZ Mill Show. Today we have another black owned business. Today it's a little bit different. So today we have uh, more education and basically what more education is is a black owned uh, supplementary school which is basically a um, education tuition classes that you can do on the side um, as I said it's black owned it's from age from year 7 to year 12 and the curriculum is what you would get at school they also offer um, an other curriculum as well, extra curriculum to do with finances, to do with black history as well. Obviously, this is really important because, you know, a lot of kids have been suffering during lockdown, not being able to go to school, doing homeschooling, not getting the, uh, the attention that they need from the teachers. So this here, more education is very, very, very vital to our community. And this is the stuff that we need. Um, as I said, again, I keep saying that it's black owned because that's very important. It's actually black male, which I think is also very important to to have black male teachers to teach our young boys as well coming up uh, positive male black influences so um, I will put all the information in the box below they have a website you can hit them up um, find out what classes they do find out how much it costs etc etc again so more education um, and this is very much needed in our community thank you okay we have to put Dave on the leap Dave come here come here Come here now, quick. Mum, get him. Mum, get him. Dave, come here. What do you got? Oh, sorry, guys, I'm going to have to stop. He's not going to come. <laughs> of all things, to interrupt my interview, Dave, interrupt my interview. Dave, come here. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> come here. Dave, stop. Mum, get him. <laughs> stop. But You're naughty, look. <laughs> We have to tie you up now. Getting bored. Aren't you, Dave? You're getting bored. Sit. Okay, cool. Sorry, guys. Peace. Welcome back to the ZZ Mills show. Obviously, I'm ZZ Mills, and today we have a very special guest. And I always say these are special guests, but I actually have a special guest because this is the woman that pushed me out of her vagina. And, <laughs> and you know, made me who I am today. So I thought, you know what, you know, um, I saw uh, Tricky's interview with his dad. And I thought, you know what, um, why not do one with my mum? And a couple of people have always said to me, oh, we'd love to get your mum on the show, you know, to talk about, I will often talk about I've been to a private school and how she done that as a single mother. Um, and then I thought, why not do it for Mother's Day? So today's Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, um, the mums-to-be and the friends that take on mother duty sometimes for their friends and whatnot. So happy Mother's Day to everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Well, it's Tuesday. Someone said I should have bought you flowers to give you today. But I thought, what's the point? Because today's Tuesday, Wednesday. You should leave it to Sunday. That's if you remember. I always remember. Do, Mum. Did you remember last year? Yes, I, what do you mean? Well, you, I tell you what you didn't remember. That I tell you what, she didn't remember because I fell down the stairs on Mother's Day. Yeah, but I bought you. I'm, bi I'm pretty sure I bought you flowers. No. You, 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 you actually said, such and such bought me these flowers and I was waiting for mine. What? Yeah, forgot. <laughs> I don't, re I don't you remember who this. bought you flowers last year. And then, yeah. Oh yes, yeah. I do remember who yeah. bought me flowers. Yeah. Yeah. But then I bought, I, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I bought you flowers. No. I'm sticking no. to that. Anyway, no. the other day I bought you flowers. Randomly, didn't I buy you flowers? Beautiful. Lovely. Yeah, exactly. Lovely. Sometimes, Lovely. you Lovely. know, Lovely. I just do that. I think it was because we was locked down and there was, you know, it was hard for me to, I'm just making excuses. I'll buy you a really big bouquet this time. No, um, but you usually do, you usually do. But I think it was because, to be honest, it was because it was the, the beginning of COVID and it was the, it was the weekend, we were going to go into the Monday lockdown. So I think, yeah. and you kept saying, Mum, I think I've got COVID. I think I've got no, COVID. No, but I did. I think I did have, I think I actually did have COVID then. Yeah. Because I lost my taste and my smell. So on Mother's Day last year, my mum came to mine and she, she fell down the stairs and then I, I don't drive. We tried to call the ambulance. The ambulance was taking. This was like the thick of COVID when they were saying like response time was up to 20 minutes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So then I, my mum was. Sometimes I think my mum's a bit dramatic. She's like, something will happen, and she'll be like, oh, oh, 
and I just be like, what is going on? And really, no, nothing's <laughs> happening. Like, absolutely nothing is happening, right? So I was a bit like, oh my God, here we go. Like, she, I thought she's, nothing's, it's not a major thing. It's just a little bit of a drop, right? And I went downstairs and she was all curled up at the bottom of the stairs, like, Zurika, help me. And I was just like, oh, mum, stop it. Tried to call the ambulance, the ambulance didn't come. I then had to get in my mum's car, drive her to the hospital, and um, it t what happened? What, ha what, did it, what did it turn out to be? Can I just say, can I just remind you what you said? You sound like you're dying. That's yeah, I did, because yeah. you did sound like you were yeah. dying. And I was like, it's not necessary. <laughs> like, reel it in a little bit. Yeah, but I'd ripped my patella tendon. Oh, okay. That she actually had to have an operation and everything, yeah. and it was, uh, so maybe she wasn't exaggerated. Anyway, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are you nervous about today? No, I'm not, actually. Can, uh, you, can you try not to say my name? I will try. I mean, I've ju I just said it not too long ago. I literally just said it like two minutes ago, so you probably can if you want. Obviously, you named me. Uh, actually, you, you can call me Zalika if you want. It's yeah. fine. Um, so I thought I'd bring you on the show today because a lot of people, sometimes people say to me, you know, I, I, I've made it clear, you know, that you put me through a private school for primary school and for a secondary school. And a lot of people was like, oh my gosh, how did your mum do that as a single parent, um, et cetera, et cetera. You should get your mum on the show and talk about it. And then I just thought it would be nice to have a chat about, just for Mother's Day, about what you think of me, how brilliant I am, um, what you think of me. Obviously, it hasn't always been smooth. I mean, I think we have quite a pretty good relationship. What do you think? I think we've always ha we've had a good relationship. I think you've always been, you was a, a very compliant child, a compliant teenager, but there's a stage when you start to find yourself, you know, you know, in your early 20s. And I do remember thinking, Lord, you never prepared me for this stage. You really didn't. Why? Because did you think it was going to come earlier? No, I thought you got rid of, I think, because you got through, like, being a compliant child and a compliant teenager. I didn't expect that, that kind of rebellion in your 20s sort of thing, you know what I mean? Because usually people ha start rebelling in their teens. Right, so okay, I yeah. didn't expect that kind of, I thought... I thought you brought me up in the church, but I actually enjoyed going to church a lot. I, I, that was like my stomping ground, KICC days. Um, so probably that's probably why I was quite compliant. And then when I stopped going to church, that's probably when I was a bit, when I t went a bit w wild. How did that make you feel? I, 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 um, it's not so much being wild. I think you're just finding yourself. You're just finding your yourself to express yourself. And I think um, it was new to me, that kind of expression was new to me. But did it make yeah. you a little bit, did it make you, did it ever make you sad or disappointed? You know, like when I, because I, 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 I kind of just went cold turkey and I stopped going to church. You still go to church, you're still very active yeah, in yeah. the church. So when I stopped going to church, how did that make you feel? Um, no, I, there was a point where I thought myself, I'm just going to trust and believe that there's a foundation I've laid and, you know, you're going to be fine. So, um, yes, I would like. Uh, yes, I would have liked you to continue going to church, but but I do believe that there's a part of of growing up, and people have to find themselves and and find out what they want and what they need in life. Did you think by now we'll be back in the church instead of like t 11, 12 years later? I'm going. <laughs> I'm wild. No, no, but but no, I, no, not an expectation. But I do believe that one day you will get back in the church. I really do, um, but. You know what I mean? I, I still believe that you still, even though there's times you, you don't say it, but I still believe that there's times when you, you do trust and believe in, in God in terms of him covering you and keeping you safe and, and making and opening doors for you. So what age did you have me? I was 27. Oh, okay. Ooh. And so you had me at 27 and just maybe just talk about how I was maybe as a child or because I, I, I think I've always kind of been in this world like entertainment world from quite young like well from what you told me that from when I was four I was like yeah I want to do acting is that true that's true yeah that is true um, and there was about I think it was about two years old and I and you just chatted so much and you performed all the time do you know what I mean you know um, so I always knew there was something there in terms of your performing, performing ability. Um, and, and then as you got like three and then by four, you were definitely saying, 
you know, you wanted to act and things like that. But I also felt I've got to channel this energy somewhere. I've got to challenge this talent somewhere. So, and that's when I started taking you to um, um, your, what we call speech and drama classes. Yeah. Um, um, so that's, and that's how we started. And I, cause I knew that there was a God given talent there, which I knew I had to, I knew I had to, to develop. So my mum used to put me through like loads of extra curriculum activities. Uh, it was tennis. We did tennis, um, what we did swimming, what else did we do? We did horse riding at one point. Um, how did you manage to do all of those stuff as a single parent? It's about putting your priorities and knowing your priorities. Yeah. You, you know, I think that's what, I think there's as parents, you, you um, I think there's a point of you, you've got to know that you want where you want your child to go and, and you've got to be prepared to make those sacrifices. Okay. Um, and so it's about, for me, it was about opening you into a world which probably most people will think, no, I can't go down that route. So it was the tennis lessons, it let her experience ten tennis lessons, let her experience horse riding lessons because I think there's certain, there's certain activities what people tend to think is only for particular groups of people. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so, yeah. You, know, you know, so I wanted you to experience that. Um, and, that's, and that's why I, I was just, you know, testing you out and everything. But I knew where your talent and your gifts were was in, in acting. I feel like you wanted me to do sports because you was into athletics. There, there was all that side <laughs> of me because I'm, like I said, I'm a sportswoman or was a sportswoman. So I always felt that there was, that you were going to be that sports person, but I soon realised that no, you didn't like sport really. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you didn't like sport, and, and like I said from from literally from t you know two years on, two years old, even when you was at nursery, you know one of your nursery teachers said you would have them in hysterics, and that was when you was only three going on four. So, um, but you just have everyone in hyster hysterics. I remember when we were in, in Lanzarote on holiday once, and you was you were seven at the time. And this man actually said to me, you, you, he was, you had him in hysterics around the poolside, and he actually said to me, if this child is not famous, I'll eat my hat. I remember, remember him saying that, because you just had him in hysterics, when you, and you was only like seven years old. So, and then I'll fast forward, kind of, to... So I always, basically, in my household, it was always me, my mum, and my gran, and my uncle at one point, and then as I got older, it was me, my mum, and my gran, until I moved out. So that was my that was my family my family unit. So I've always been very close to my mum. I would cry like if my mum would leave the house for too long. Um, I was like joined to her hip. I used to suck my thumb. I used to have her nighty with me at all times. Um, so I've always been very close to her and very um, attached. So then you, I went to normal school. Well, like. What do they call it? State school. Ma mainstream. Mainstream, mainstream school. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you State took me school, out yeah. of there and then you put me into private school, which I was quite upset about because I did like my school that I went to in Edmonton because I had friends there. Mm -hmm. And then you took me out. But then I, I, I pre I'm obviously extremely appreciative of that. Why did you take me out of mainstream and then put me into private? Um, because I saw that there was a definitely um, an intelligent child, which I wanted to to maximize on and I wanted to make sure that you de developed your potential and I didn't feel at that time that the school you were in was doing was doing that mm -hmm. yeah so I and and I always believe that um, that education is very important and 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 I always had this thing about when people start saying average but average to who you know you know like you, the child is average. And I'm like, but who are you comparing that child to? So I didn't want to be, I didn't want you to be that average child in the average school. So that's what, and I knew that you were very intelligent. Um, and even like you were younger, you knew that you was having one-to-one -one maths and English lessons, which, you know, the, the teacher said, again, you were very clever. So and that, and from when she said that, I knew, all right, okay, I want to make sure I maximize her potential because we know that as, as black people, we have to stand out amongst everybody else. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I, I gave you that opportunity to maximize your potential. So then you put me through that and then I went to Sylvia Young, which I thoroughly enjoyed. That's one thing I, I'm, I will be forever grateful for you for doing that, for putting me through Sylvia's. 
when you, because you put me through Sylvia's, and obviously Sylvia's was extremely expensive, okay? So then when I came out of Sylvia's and I started doing acting, and well, I, acting was always my thing, right? I wanted to say, ask you, was you, did you ever, have you ever felt at one point like you've wasted your money? Like, because obviously I didn't go into, I haven't gone into acting. I kind of do what I do now. And I've only kind of been doing this maybe for the last three to four years. Yeah. But was there any time in the middle where you were just like, oh, mate, I spent all that money on her and what's she doing? Nothing. No, because it, it, for me, it wasn't about nothing. It was about, um, it was about giving you that opportunity. And I've always believed that God didn't bless you with that talent for it to be not used. So I've always held on to that. And even, even, even the last year, two years, um, and even before you've broken through, I would say, I would always say, Lord, you're gonna, I know you're gonna open the door for her because you wouldn't have blessed her with that, with that natural talent for acting, for, for poor performing, if you weren't gonna utilize it. I, do you still, but I feel sometimes like you still want me to do acting. Like you'll send me like little messages about, oh yeah, look at this acting. And I'm kind of like, well, I don't really do that anymore, mum. Because I still feel there's another level to you in terms of performing. And this is one side of it, but I think, think there's another side of, perform, of what I call perform, perform, performance and performing arts. Would you, would you be really happy if, you know, would you feel extremely proud if I got back into acting? Well, I wouldn't know. It's not about extremely proud, but I, I still believe the fact that you have always said that you wanted to be on the big screen. OK, you, you are on the big screen in one sense, but you've always said that you wanted to be on the big screen. And I, and I do f still believe that your passion is performing. I really do. But, but I don't but, know yeah. if it is anymore because okay, I just yeah. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I, I, I enjoy acting anymore like I used to mm. and I think because I've had so much rejection from acting uh, it doesn't it doesn't make me feel good like I, like all those auditions you know when I was younger I enjoyed doing it but when I got to a certain age mm -hmm. you know after countless rejection 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 you kind of just like what is the point of this and you try and find something new or you you find another avenue and I think that's what I've kind of done because yeah after a while it just becomes very draining do you know what I mean you're constantly going on auditions and nothing mm. is really happening for you and then because nothing's happening for you you're kind of then in a job that you don't even enjoy because you're still trying to make your acting thing work yeah. do you get what I'm saying so um, I think that's why I went uh, I went um, I went this route and obviously when I started doing the show you wasn't impressed it, <laughs> it was a sh it was a shock it was a shock because because it was just so explicit. And um, I think when you come from like our generation, there are certain things just, you didn't, you didn't talk about, they were personal to you. Okay, you might have talked about them with, in, behind closed doors with your, your friend, you know what I mean, yeah. you know, but you, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't out there in the atmosphere sort of thing, you know what I mean, you know. And, um, and so there's a part of me thinks, there's a part of me what says, it's personal and, and people shouldn't know about your personal sex life or whatever, whatever you're doing. Yeah, but I don't go and, into detail, do I? And, um, well, well, I don't know about that. Yeah, but, I'm, but I might say I know. enjoy giving head, but I'm not going to talk about my technique, am I? No, but it's still, it's still something which I think is quite personal. And, I, and, I th and I've also got this thing about, we say that there's equality in terms of man and woman, but I still think that when a guy is quite explicit about his sex life, yeah. he's looked at differently from when a woman look, talks about her sex life and what she likes and what she doesn't like. Um, and I still, th and that's my, I think that's my mother protection element coming out, is that how are they perceiving my daughter when she when she's so open and honest about mm. about, about her her se you know her sexual activities. So that's why I was quite shocked because. Because I, because I'm quite a, p a private person, I always thought that you were private, and 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 so when you were so open, I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Did people send you my videos? The the, the initial one, yeah. Someone actually said, have, have you seen this? That's how I found out. Because if you remember, you weren't telling me about it. Yeah, yeah I was. 
yeah, you, yeah, yeah. And, um, and then I discovered why you weren't telling me about it. And then oh, someone, and I someone wasn't telling you about it because I was like embarrassed. I just knew that your reaction was going to be like that. So I just thought there's no point. There's no point of telling you because I know that you're going to be, uh, you're going to be shocked. Mm. You're going to give me like some sort of lecture, which I actually don't really want to hear. You know what I mean? Because yeah. this is like what I'm doing now. So it was a little bit, I just, I kind of almost said, like I said to you, when we used to have these back and forth, I would say, if you don't like the, sh I don't advise you to watch the show. Just don't watch it. You know, yeah. and I think you did stop watching it for a while, but now every so often you still might say, "Oh, I enjoyed your interview with this person," so I know you kind of watched it. Uh, you 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 watched it, but um, I still feel as if you're quite shocked by stuff, even after three four years. I am, I am, because there's there's the point where you think it was up. Okay, like, okay, she's having a serious interview, and then right at the end, like, and I'm like, oh god, she's gone down that route again. So I, I still I still get shocked. I, st I still I still get shocked how was it for you actually because obviously you're in the church how was it for you you know going to church and knowing that people in church have probably seen my videos about me talking about you know giving oral or if i've had a free sermon and all this kind of stuff how did you ever feel embarrassed a bit like no oh my i didn't God. actually no no um are you the, sure the, yeah no i wasn't embarrassed no i wasn't embarrassed um because I don't, I don't talk about it, so there's nothing. Yeah, but people, I mean, like people looking at you or saying stuff. I'm pretty sure. I, like I wouldn't have known if they were. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know if they were. Um, but because um, no one had, no one never said anything to me. But I, I did have. I, t I tell you, there's times when it was. It, I felt probably awkward when I was um, at one of the youth camps, and one of the girls said, "Is is you look like Zizi?" And you know, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> So that was kind of like, you know, um, like I'm literally in this youth camp and, my, and she knows my daughter, do you know what I mean, you know, and she knows what my daughter talks about. So, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's my daughter, yeah, yeah. Um, when, when was I the hardest? Sorry? When was I the hardest to deal with? I think, like I said, I think it was more when you was in your 20s, when you were finding your feet, but also I think you, because, but also finding your feet, but also finding life challenging because you, the doors weren't opening for you. Yeah. So you were very angry, you were very um, frustrated. The times when I knew that you were quite low in spirit. So, you know what I mean? I would get the backlash lash of that as well. Do you know what I mean? You know, um, what do you mean the backlash? Like the, the lip, the mouth, you know what I mean? The attitude, you know? Yeah, so which sometimes as a mother is very hard to take. Um, yeah, so I think sometimes I was a little bit annoyed at you sometimes mm. because I felt in a way sometimes I feel which is it might this might come out wrong, but like you mummy coddled me a lot, so you kind of didn't prepare me for the real world well, if that makes sense so well, you there's, there's a part of it um. Cause you you just like you know what I mean like I went to I went to private school second like primary and secondary school which I enjoyed and then I went to and I'm like I said I'm forever, forever grateful for that then I went to um, uh, college which was a normal school and I think that's when I started getting like the taste of the the real world yeah, like yeah, you know sh yeah. shit doesn't work out the way you always think it's yeah. gonna be mm. and I think I didn't feel like you understood that I was finding that weird because I just thought you know I was going to come out of Sylvia's and be this like m this amazing yeah. like big star yeah and I didn't think that you kind of understood how that but I was thinking you should understand because you put me through these you put me in these environments that kind of made a, a different world for me do you get what I mean yeah but I think that wasn't so much that I didn't understand because I, ca I came through a generation where we we had to we had to fight for our positions. So I, I wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't that I didn't understand, is that I felt there's times when, it's like when you went off to, you went off to LA, you know, for a period, you, you know, um, you had your first breakthrough when you did, when we, when we got, when you had that um, Coca-Cola advert yeah, and you yeah. were f flown out to Prague um, and then you decided to come back and do things and go off to LA. Um, but even then, when you came back, and it was very clear what the one of the directors, producers said to you, that you've got to start knocking on doors yourself. Don't expect it to come back, come, you know what I mean, for doors to open. Um, and 
even when you was at Silver Young, both your acting te teachers said to you, never seen talent like it. You know, I mean, I remember one of the uh, acting teachers actually said, I'm not saying it, I've been in Silver Young too, too, too long, but this is a natural talent, She'd never seen talent like it. Then you went to college, you went to Sydney and Islington, and this, your drama teacher said the same thing, never seen, act, never seen talent like it. But there's a part of me what became frustrated because you wouldn't knock on the doors when you were told to knock on doors. You know what I mean? You know, it's like, I think there's part of you expected it just to, to land on your lap because you were so natural at it. Do you know what I mean? You know, don't forget you'd written a play, you produced it. Do you know what I mean? You know, and it was brilliant. You know, but I just felt there's times when you were just so complacent in terms of your natural God-given talent and you didn't fight for your space to knock on doors. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I came frustrated because that's probably where I think you felt that I still had to modicoddle you and I'm like, no, I'm not going to modicoddle you. It's your, it's, you've got to start making some inroads yourself. Do you think I'm too argumentative? Oh, yeah. Remember, I've said to you, do you remember what I used to say to you? Do you even at school, I used to say to you, look, just as... It's not the time you have to have the last say. I feel like sometimes you have to zip it. So, yeah, so, yeah, you, you just have to have the last say all the time. And, and I, do you know what I mean? You know, there's a time when you have to think, no, I don't need to say that. But you just felt you always had to have the last say. Um, what was your... Um, I, was, it, was, um, was Granny really loving to you? Yeah, she's always been. I mean, don't forget, they came from a generation, again, that they showed love in different ways. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you know, I mean, I was, I always told you I loved you. you yeah, that's you know, my, I, yeah, my yeah. that's why I was asking you because yeah. you, um, I, I think maybe that's why I'm quite needy, which I'm not, I don't care about that, but I think you gave me so much love that that's what I expect now from everyone. Like any sort of, especially like romantic relationships, I expect that level of love because that's all the, you've given me so much love. Like, you will always, you know, tell me growing up how much you loved me, you yeah, know, yeah. we'll come off the phone and say love each other or you, you know, you're always, you're, you've always been very emotionally available, you know, to me. Um, but I was wondering if, you know, is, did you have that love or did you not have that love? So that's why you decided that you was going to like give me loads of love. But I think it was, I think it's not comparable because they were brought up differently. Do you know what I mean? You know, in terms of grannies brought up differently, they were brought up with like very strict, strict, you know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. and they, they only showed what they were shown. So, but in terms of, of love, of course we were loved because, you know, we always had clean clothes and we always had hot, cooked meals every evening. Do you know what I mean? You know, you know, mummy went out and, you know what I mean? She went out and she'd come back and there was always food on the table. Granddad will, you know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean, seven days a week working or six days a week working, you know, the money was on the table for, for granny. She would shop in, there was always, the house was always, you know, we, you know what I mean, Dad, daddy bought houses, you know what I mean, you know, yeah. so we always lived in big houses. So they showed, they showed love how they knew, that's the only way they knew how to show love. Yeah. But I knew that there was another level of love, which I then gave to you. And I think also, um, I think you was, there was always going to be a side where I was always going to be over, to a certain extent, overbearing because I'd lost a child before you, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? You know, so it's like, you know what I mean? When you came along, it's like, whoa, do you know what I mean? You know, so I think there was always going to be, um, you know what I mean? And I think when you have a miscarriage, it, it does set another level of the next one's going to be extra special. Mm. It's going to be extra special. And, and, um, and so that's probably where all the, what I call the extra attention or the extra love came came in a, a, as well because um, because I knew that 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 you were gonna you would you were gonna be the, the the icing on the cake from what happened from the last time. I think the most um, disappointed I've ever seen you is when I dropped out of uni. I think you was <laughs> I've I've never seen my mum like my mum was going on like I came home and I told her that I was mate on some neck like I was robbed a bank or something and I was about to go to jail for five years my she was like did some intervention called her friend to made us have a chat and like I was kind of I thought I just I actually thought you just overreacted about the whole thing I think it's because again is that I I have this thing that education is important knowledge is important learn is important learning is important and I think there's always 
and I think there's a level of education what opens up doors for you. Having said that, having said that... Having said that, a <laughs> motherfucking start! I'm joking. <laughs> having said that, I do believe that, that God blesses people with gifts and talents in even different ways. But because we live in a system, we live in a society whereby it's your GCSEs, it's your A-levels, it's uni, and those are the kind of things where people think they, they tend to, to have kind of... What's the, what's the word I'm trying to look at? They, they tend to put people in, in categories. So, you, yes, you've got your GCSEs, yes, you've got your A-levels, yes, you've got your, your, your degrees. So there's a certain category of people. But I think as I've got older, I've, I, you know what I mean, and I've accepted that like I say, people have different talents mm -hmm. and, it's f and it's how we embrace those talents with our children. And that's why I would say to any mother is that, yes, the academic side is, is great and it's, and it's essential, um, but, l but learning is lifelong. And, and if there's another way of your, your son and your daughter is, is maximising their potential, the academic side may not be them, but you must embrace and learn to embrace that God-given talent, what's been given to them, and try to channel them in, a, in another way, which, we, you know, I mean, obviously you have to come out with your GCSEs or, yeah, but it's not so much the A-levels are not, doesn't have to be always be, and the degree doesn't have to always be there. So, yeah. Do you feel like you've made loads of sacrifices for me? Um, like, do you feel like you've lived your life properly? I think so, yeah. I think those are the... I think with any, well, not any, but most parents, you realise that there, there is a sacrifice. Do you not mean, you know, do you not mean, there's times when I'd be, do you not mean I'd be like, okay, what time is it at work? Oh, gosh, is this meeting going to run on too, too long? Because I need to go and get my car, go and pick my daughter up, take her to her acting lesson. Oh, you know, you know. and so you do, your, your life is sort of like, most mo mothers will tell you, your life is sort of like dictated around this child who's, who you've got until 18 years old and older, do you know what I mean, you know? And most of us as uh, working mothers will laugh that there's times when we're praying the years away because we're like, oh, can't wait to get them get them school because I don't have to be picking them up from nursery, do you know what I mean, you know? And like, oh, they're gonna be in school. And then, oh, I can't wait till they're 11 because they can take themselves off to school, do you know what I mean, you know? So there's, there's lots of sacrifices you make, do you know what I mean, you know? And if you want your child to, to maximise their potential. There are sacrifices, and when I say sacrifices, it just means that you're in a car driving your child to their next lesson. It, you know what I mean, you know, after school activity. So how do you, yeah. how do you think you, because we have to wrap up in a bit, how do you think you've done it? Because a lot of people might be like, how did you manage to, you know, put ZZ through private school and all these ex extracurriculums? Like, you didn't ever, you, I mean, you've had good jobs, but it's not, it's not like you've had really, really high paying, paying jobs, yeah, you get what I mean, yeah, where people yeah. might feel like, oh, you've got, you might be CEO or something like that, but, so just maybe quickly I, say. Um, I think for me, it's about knowing what's important. So, um, I mean, when, when, I remember one point, we didn't have a car, did we? No. Because I think what was more, what was more important, the, the car or paying for your school fees? So those are the kind of things you weigh up, you know what I mean, you know. So it's about making sure that you, you're in tune with your money. You, you, know, you know, what am I going to spend my money on? Do I need to buy this as opposed to do I want to buy it? So you're constantly doing your juggling act. And I do, and I do, and I, I've always said this to you, is that why would I put my child in 100 pound trainers when they need to have an English and math lesson, because the, the education is more important. And that's what I would say to any parent, you've got to make sure that the materialistic things are not taking priority over making sure that your child is educated. Mm -hmm. So if they do need that extra English lesson or that English extra math lesson, that should be your priority to, 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 to make sure that they have a good f step in onto either college or university, wherever they want, or, you know, or, or the what I would call um, some very good schools, which come under grammar schools, but the, the, but you, they're selective schools. So right. it's about making sacri making sacrifices, but knowing why you want to make those sacrifices. I mean, I what I want for you now is my my biggest thing is I want you to um, find a boyfriend. <laughs> I want you to find somebody that is going to make you very happy. 
Because I think that, I think you, um, I think you deserve that. Like, I think you deserve somebody to, to make you happy and to do stuff with, because you like to go out, you like to do things and you're very active. And um, like, yeah, I just want, I just want, because I think you're a happy person. And then I, I think, especially after like granny passed away, like there's no one in that, like it's just you at the home. I've moved out now. Yeah. So that, that's like my thing. I, I just, I want you to, I want you to be happy. I want you to have like someone love on you and, and really like care about you and take you out and do nice things and spend loads of money on you and, and treat you nice and stuff. Amen. So amen, I just, amen. Like, that, 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 would, that would be my thing. And also I just would like, I know like sometimes I'm, I'm, a, I'm a handful and I, I, I like give it the large and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm, very, I'm very appreciative and I'm very thankful for, for everything you've, you've ever done for me. And even though sometimes we argue and we don't get along, uh, but I always know that like, there's some people, their, their parents are not there for them. Like they, they can't call their parents for anything. Do you know what I mean? They, they have to like look after their parents. And I don't think I've ever felt like, <laughs> this might sound bad, but <laughs> I've never felt like I've had to look after you. You know, there's, there's some people out there, they have to yeah. like oh, financially yeah. provide yeah. for their parents all the time or whatever. And even sometimes, you know, as I've, you know, I've got better at my money and management and all that kind of stuff. But I know like, if I was to fall fat on my face, you're still gonna help me. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm very, I'm very appreciative of that. And I just, I just want to say um, thank you. And I just, I just hope that you're proud of me. I'm not. I am. I am. And I've always been proud of you. Um, you know. But you know. But sh she's gonna inherit my two houses anyway. Do you know what I mean? You know. Like. Do you know. You know. <laughs> but uh, um, again, no. But I've always been proud of you. Do you know what I mean? You know. There's times when I think myself. There's times. You're, I think there's times you think you're too tunnel vision. Do you know what I mean? You know. Like this is what I want. Don't think. Don't think about other things. But I'm. I'm sure you're getting more. More. More aware of that. Um, but I call it being just being stubborn, not so much tunnel, but being stubborn. But yeah, no, and and um, and I'm sure the Lord will bless me with the right man. Any single <laughs> men out there for my mother? You, know. you can like, you, you know. know. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he will do. You know what I mean? You know. Um, I think that's one of the things which maybe that's what you sacrificed. I think that's no. I, that's definitely one of the things which I knew I wouldn't. I'm, I'm one of these women, I was one of these women who, that if I didn't find some, if someone, did, if I didn't meet someone and didn't, and didn't marry me, then I definitely wouldn't have, I wasn't going to have the second child, but also I wasn't going to allow men into my life to interfere with, with how I wanted to raise you, because I didn't want to have to compromise in terms of dividing my attention between this, this man and you, because I knew what I wanted for you, sort of thing. So that's probably the sacrifice I made. You don't mean, you know. Um, but I don't regret that either. I don't regret that at all. So, yeah. Um, well, this has been a nice chat. I feel like it's been a bit of therapy, you know. I mean, but I think we're quite honest. Like, everything we talk about, I'll tell you if I'm upset with you or if you've annoyed yeah, yeah. me or oh, yeah. vice versa. I mean, I'm... I'm I'm thinking. I blocked my mum the other day off Instagram because she <laughs> got on my nerves. She hasn't. She hasn't. She hasn't allowed me back on either. And I've just like. I've yeah, I blocked today. her. Did yeah. you check today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But first of all, she wouldn't even tell me that she was on Instagram. There was. She kept letting it slip. Like, oh yeah, I saw in your story, and I was like, mm, how did you see all my story? You can't just see people's stories on Instagram unless you have an account. So that's how I figured out. And then I found you, um, and I had to block her because she got. She sent me a message that I was really annoyed about, and I said, look, you don't. You're not going to be able to send messages anymore. So I'm going to block you um, I'll unblock you for this so that you can see the promo and stuff and whatnot but the only thing is that what, what you can what you complained about me seeing wasn't related to yeah, but I Instagram still, yeah, but I, know, but I, still, I still blocked you yeah because you again it was like yeah but you shouldn't have defended <laughs> those people anyway you should defend me that's the thing but um, again thank you for coming on is it done already yeah, yeah, I know. I thought I was gonna cry, but I didn't cry. I nearly, I welled up a little bit, but I, I thought I was gonna cry. But um, I don't think we're really that. I'm, I'm not really. I don't. Re I don't. I'm not emotional crier. As in, I, I don't cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm sad. If that mm, makes sense. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. You don't cry a lot, do you? No, I cry when I'm sad. Well, you, you, well, you know, I can. You know, I have to watch. I just can watch a film and burst into tears. You know that. 
because you used to say, Mama, are you crying? <laughs> I think the most, I think the most probably vulnerable I've ever seen you is probably when Granny passed away. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's when I felt like, you know, I had to kind of, maybe, actually, maybe that's the only time in life, in my life that I've ever felt like I had to, um, I wouldn't say look after you, but I felt like I had to look after you. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. I felt like I had to make sure you was okay yeah. because it's always kind of just been you, me, and granny. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And then, like, that's, that's all we've ever known. It, and it was a difficult time. It was a difficult time. And I think that's, that's another thing as well, where, whereby as, as black women, we're portrayed as this, like, Strong, super woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know? yeah. And then we d we're just as bad because we portray ourselves as this superwoman, do you know what I mean, mm, you know, mm. and, and, um, and there's times when things like that hit us, we, you know what I mean, you know, and, um, and then we realise that we're not superwomen, we just, we have, and we, then we have to let it all out, yeah. you know, we have to let it all out, so. And yeah, yeah. I, I, and that's another thing, I'm, I'm glad that I've always, I'm glad that I was raised with you and Granny, like, mm. I will, That's something that I'm happy yeah. about because you and Granny like. Yeah. It's like when when Granny went, that was hard. I know it's hard for you, definitely. definitely. Because that's yeah. like all I knew was Granny and you. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? And then like when I saw how sad you was as well, that was hard for me. <laughs> you okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought, I said to Zoe, it'd probably be Granny, my Granny, when I speak about my Granny, that's all gonna make me cry. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, she was a rock for all of us. That's the thing about it. You don't mean, you know, making me cry now. <laughs> oh, no. she, she, was a, she was a rock for all of us, all of us. You know what I mean, you know, the, for her children and, um, and you know, um, for the, her grandchildren and her church sisters, church brothers. She's been a rock for everybody, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yes, and that's why that's why it so impacts me de definitely. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that's enough of this. It's a bit much, isn't it, guys? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know what to do. Wish your mums. Thank you for everything, mum. Thank you for the. Time. I'll buy you some big. I'm going to buy a big bouquet now. Um, for you, I'll get delivered to you on, what are we going to do on Saturday? Do I have to cook for you on Sunday? I don't cook, no, I'm not really no, a cooker, no, am I? No, definitely not. Why no. You, no, 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 don't do that. No, don't make it seem like no, I can't cook. No. Wow. I'm not, I'm not and I'm not coming round to yours anyway. That was, the, no. guys, husbands out there, I can cook. Don't, don't listen to my mum's no. reaction. No, she does, she cooks very well, but I'm not because last Mother's Day, I fell down the yeah, stairs. So I'll, I'm not I'll going round to I'll, her I'll house. I'll come Sadly to you. Not. Anyway, guys, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family. It's a nice one to watch with your mum. We out.